In this tutorial, I'll go over the feedback and the comments from the community on my provider architecture. And I will also show you how to share data between multiple models using services. We'll start off with why I'm using Gedit for dependency injection if provider is a dependency injection library. To put this reason simply, it's because it is less verbose and it is easy to maintain in my opinion. There's a discussion that I had around a pull request from Remy, the creator of the provider package, where he shows me how I can use the provider only to do my dependency injection. You can read the full discussion and our comments in the description below. Basically what it boils down to is that when you use the provider only, you'll be writing a bit more code and I don't think it's maintainable for me. The reason for that is the way that you set up the provider and the fact that when you want to inject more properties, you'll have to always change this code and add additional pieces of code. Whereas with get it, this is not the case. Let's look at an example. Currently on the provider git repo, there's a branch called proxy provider. To put in very simple terms, the proxy provider allows you to get your previously registered services or models and you can access that while registering a new provider. So using this functionality, you can inject whatever services you want into your newly registered providers. Let's go with a simple example that is being used in our current app architecture. We want the authentication service to be injected into the property on the login model. To get that done, we will wrap our material app in a multi-provider. Then the first provider that we'll give is the API because we need to inject that into the authentication service that needs to go into the login model. Then we want to register the authentication service using a proxy provider and asking for the API to be supplied to us as well. Then in the builder, we can now set our API property equal to the API provided by the proxy provider. And then finally, we can register our login model and we'll use a proxy provider, a custom one. And given that we return the authentication service, we can set the property of the authentication service equal to the authentication service returned by the builder. And for the provider builder, we will create a new change notifier provider of the login model and pass that to the provider builder. My problem is not only with the readability and the fact that it's so many lines of code, but it is also with the fact that whenever you want to add new properties to inject or new services into your model, you would have to come to this file and you would have to add a new provider, make sure that it's above the previous provider that needs the new one. And you would have to then set your properties for that and always have to come and customize the code for this. When you are using Git, it as a dependency injection you only register your type and if you want to add new properties to any of the models you don't have to go and update anything else besides just adding that property into the model and requesting the type from the get it locator but after speaking to remy about all of this i can see that it is possible to do everything with provider but for me at this moment i am not a fan of writing more code for less or the same functionality so i'll stick with using get it in my architecture until provider has a more clean and maintainable way and also more readable way to do the same thing that get it is doing the next thing that was commented on is disposing of the models when we are done using it admittedly i didn't cover this in the previous architecture video and it's simply because i wasn't thinking about that and that i didn't think it's important to show just to get the idea of the architecture across we can simply just override the dispose function in the base view and then we can call model.dispose and this will allow us to override the dispose function in the model itself where you can clean up streams or anything that you think you need to clean up. Now let's move on to some implementation. I'll be showing in this video how you can share the same data between multiple models in your architecture. The example that we'll implement in this case is that we have a like count next to our title on the home listing screen. For each post view, there'll be a like button with a like count next to it. And if you press this button, the like count should increase. But when you navigate back to the home view, that count should match the one that was on the post view. To implement this, we'll create a service that contains all of our post information and functionality. Head over to the services folder and create a new file called post service. This file will be a class called post service and it will have a reference to the API which will be injected through the locator from get it. It will also have a private list of posts that it will keep track of. We'll expose this list of posts through a property called posts. And then there's two pieces of functionality that we want on the service. 
The first one is a function to trigger the servers to go and fetch the new posts based on a user ID passed in. For this, we'll create a future called get posts for user that takes in a user ID integer. And all we'll do in this function is we'll await the API call called get post for user and pass in the user ID. The information returned we will set equal to the posts in our service. The second function we want to expose is a public function called increment likes that takes in a post ID. In this function, we will get the first post where the ID of the post matches the post ID passed in. When we have this value, we will increment the likes on it. We also have to then go and add the new likes integer to the post model. So head over there and add the new integer likes. In the from JSON name constructor, we will set the likes equal to zero. And in the to JSON method, we will now pass in the likes key and we'll set it to the likes value. Then we can head over to the locator and register our post service as a lazy singleton. Now we can head over to the home model and we can, instead of using the API, we'll use our post service in there. So we'll add a new instance of the post service that we'll get from the locator. The posts will now not be a value that we can set, but instead will just be a property that exposes the posts from the post service. And for the get posts function, we'll still call the get post for user, but instead of using the API, we'll just tell the post service to go fetch the new posts. Then we'll add the basic UI updates that we spoke about to the post list item. So all we want to do is to add the post likes next to the title. And then we have one more piece of UI left, which is to insert the like button under the post body in the post view. This button will be completely standalone and have its own model so that when it updates itself, it doesn't cause a re-render of the entire view. Go to the widgets folder and create a new file called like button. We'll import material and then we'll create a new stateless widget called like button. Since we know that this like button will have its own model, you can go to the view models folder and create a new model called like button model. This will be a pretty simple model. It is a class called like button model that extends the base model. For the UI of the like button, we will set the root as the base view and pass it the type of like button model. And for now, for the builder UI, we will just return an empty row. This button will depend on the post ID being passed into it. So we'll store the post ID as a final integer and we'll pass that in through the constructor. Next up, we just want to add um, text that says likes and then prints out the post likes that we retrieve from the model through a function called post likes. Head over to the model and create a new function that returns an integer called post likes. To get the likes, we will inject the post service into the like button model. And for the post likes function, we will get all the posts from the post service and we will get the first post where the ID matches and then we will return the likes from that post. And then the last piece of UI is the material button, which will increment the posts. We'll create the material button and in on pressed, we'll call a function called increment likes and pass in the post ID. We'll set the color of this button to white and we will give it a child icon and the icon data will be a thumbs up icon. Then we'll increment the increase likes function on our model. We'll create a new function called increase likes that takes in the post ID. And in this function, we'll call the increment likes on the post service and then we'll notify the listeners that the post has changed. Now head over to the locator and register the like button model as a factory. The last piece of UI to add before we run this code is to add the like button model under the post body and we'll pass in the post ID. Now when you run this code and go through the normal login process, you'll see that there is a like count next to each title. When you open a post, you'll see the like button and when clicking on that like button, it will increment the number of likes and when you navigate back, you'll see that the number of likes next to the post title has also increased and it matches. This is the process that you'll go through whenever you wanna share data between models. You'll encapsulate everything into a service, the functionality and the data, and you will expose that to the models using a single service. This way your models stay small and compact and easy to maintain. The next thing that people were struggling with is for some reason to show a tab toolbar over multiple views. 
So because this architecture is set up in a way that makes the model binding and its existence invisible to the outside world, the widgets that we create and the views that we create can be used without having any knowledge of the models, meaning that it can be used as normal widgets completely on its own. So because everything is just a normal widget, you'll just set up your default tab controller as you would normally. You'll give it a length, you'll give it your child, a toolbar and then the body will give a tab bar view and for the children of that tab bar view we'll just give our views as normal widgets because the model is injected internally through the base view we don't have to do anything on the outside to get this functionality to work those are the repeating questions and feedback comments that i've seen if you have anything else you want to share or ask me please come over to the slack and then i'll try my best to give the answers if i can understand what you require Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next week.